How's it going, man? Going good, man. How you doing? Oh, good, thank you. Thank you for doing this, man. Appreciate you taking the time to come and Absolutely. chat with us. Absolutely, bro. So, how are things over where you are at the moment? It's been a been a tricky year for all of us, but uh, how are things with you? It's been a tricky year and a half, I guess. You know, yeah. but uh, it's going good, man. It's been going good. Twenty twenty's been was I, a really uh, surprising year for uh, for me and my team. I'm, I mean, I'm a new artist in the middle of COVID, so it's pretty tricky, but uh, super excited still. Well, I, I get to speak to a lot of artists like yourself, and it, it's funny because although everybody's frustrated that you can't go out and perform live, it's also given you guys a lot of time to get creative and do a lot more writing and get a lot more music in the can. So have there been positives to it for you as well? Uh, yeah, man. You know, I've, it's, hard, it's easy to find a lot of uh, negative, uh, you know, stuff. You know, I, I signed my record deal in November of, of 19, so I'm, uh, two months before COVID really hit, you know, and so I had to uh, approach a lot of things differently that no one ever has as a new artist signing a record deal. Um, you know, like my signing photo wasn't even in person, you know, I was like the first person to ever have, a, you know, uh, on, on Zoom, you know, but <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. It's kind of, you know, I'm taking it the best way I can, you know, and, every, you know, I've, I've got to write a lot more. I've got to work on my craft a lot more. And it's, it's, been, it's been exciting. I'm, I'm super uh, thrilled to get to put new music out. I can't believe that I got to put music out in 2020 and uh, it do as well as it did. Not no, and no one knowing who I was at all. Yeah, that's, that's really cool and um drew i know you've had you've probably had this a thousand times but for anybody over here in the uk who's probably not too familiar with you and your music if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about your backstory and your kind of path into country music that would be that would be great right. so um i started playing music a little bit in college i guess up at a college bar and kind of realized um uh, i guess i got the itch for playing and I started, I played in, in Nashville, Tennessee. There's um, like the biggest honky tonk in the world. It's called Tootsie's Orchid Lounge. Yeah, and, I know it well. And uh, I met the owner, the guy that owns it, saw me playing. And he asked, he asked me if I wanted a job. And I didn't really know what that meant. I was probably, I think, I don't even think I was 21 yet. I was like 20. And I said, sure. And I took the gig. I went to, I played it for about six months at Tootsie's and uh, it kind of worked on my entertainment chops and I loved it, but I was driving really far from college and I was losing money. So I, I kind of quit and just kept playing college bars, graduated college, started working at a bank and kind of quit music altogether, man. And uh, for about six months and to a year. And then I started writing songs a little bit more by myself and I just got the itch and knew that I would regret it forever. And so I, so I went back to Tootsie's while I was working at the bank and I was really grinding real hard. And uh, I met a guy named Hunter Phelps. And he uh, he heard a song that I wrote for my wife at, at, for a wedding by myself. And he, he liked it and he came over the next day and wrote a song with me for the first time. And it, from that moment I wrote, I think I, I feel like I've wrote every day since, since that day, yeah. but um, just really got hooked. And that's kind of got me into the country music and learned. I played, I still played Broadway for four years. And most people don't play most that they say it's a two year, uh, a two year town where if you play, if you play down there for two years, you're there forever. But mm -hmm. I made it out somehow and uh, pretty fortunate. I uh, just kept grinding, man, just working real hard, writing songs every day, playing songs all night. So. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about the influence that Brett James had on your career, because I mean, to get the backing of someone like Brett, I mean, we, he, Brett's been to the UK, we, we know a lot about him and to have someone of his stature behind you must be such a huge advantage to someone like you. Man, so I met Brett um, through my PRO, which is, I'm an ASCAP and that um, and that's how, how the, like, who, pay, who pays me um, for being a songwriter. Yeah. And they set me up with him and 
I didn't sign with him when I first met him. Met with him. I was too young. I was too green. I wasn't ready for a publishing deal. But I went. I went home that night and told my wife. This is three years before I signed with Brett. I said. I, I, I told my wife. I said I would love to sign with this guy if I ever get the chance to to sign with somebody. And luckily, I wrote a song with Hardy, Michael Hardy, and Hunter Phelps called Colorado and Florida Georgia Line cut that song and I got me back in the room uh, with Brett and Brett uh, signed me and a year later I texted him and said hey man I think I got some songs that you haven't heard that I'd like you to hear not even talking about the artist thing at all and he listened to them and we went we had breakfast one morning and he sat in my truck and listened to like 30 songs and he was like man I think you're ready for a record deal if you want one and uh he became my manager like the next week and I got a, I signed a record deal like a week later like it was awesome. really it was really quick um very quick but Brett's been my champion uh one of the greatest dudes you know he's got 30 31 number ones I mean he's got up there number ones um he's one of my bucket list. he was one of my bucket list songwriters to begin with and now he's like my brother and my, my friend and my manager. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Very cool. And you, you mentioned Colorado there that you wrote for FGL. Tell us about that moment when, as a songwriter, you hear that FGL are going to cut one of your tracks. Cause I, I guess there's nothing more amazing in the world than that feeling. I was, I was about 10 minutes away from having my first son in the hospital wow. with my wife and Hardy calls me and was like, and I answered it because Hardy never called me. Hardy calls me and was like, hey, Florida Georgia Line's cutting her song. And I was, was like, what? And I was like, how? I, was like, I mean, I didn't even understand. Like, I didn't even heard anything at all until like, we, we wrote it like um, like two or three weeks before that. And then he calls me and says, hey, they're cutting her song. And he's like, yeah, I'm on the bus with them right now. They just flipped out, yada, yada. And he was, I was like, all right, well, I got to go. I'm having a baby. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> but uh. Um, yeah. And then what, which the coolest thing though, was Hunter and Hardy both surprised me. Uh, one day Hunter was like, let's go get lunch. And he said he had to drop off some papers and they surprised me. And I got to watch Joy Moy, the producer, uh, produce the song and, and, and then cut the song. And that was like, it was the coolest experience ever, man. And that was like my That's first, my first cut. That's incredible. So, and uh, you've got some very exciting things happening in your own career as well. Um, the current single, She Got That, has been doing huge things on Spotify. It's like 5 million plus streams now, which is crazy. Um, so tell us a little bit about how that song came together and why that one felt like a good kind of single for you. You know, I wrote that song about three years before uh, we put it out. And it, always, it just kind of trailed with me. And I always loved that song. And it was the first song I showed Brett that day when I showed him 30 songs and it was the first song we showed the label, um, which led to a deal and which there were some, there was other songs too, but it was the first, it was just the first of a lot of things. And it's, it just shows it's the first, it's the first for me now too, it looks like. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's just been, it's, it's crazy that that was, that song's, it's like the little engine that could <laughs> it's just, it's going as long as it can with me, man. <laughs> And it's, uh, it's taken from your EP that came out last year, Dirtball Volume 1. And a lot of people say that you only get one chance to make a good first impression. And I guess that project was quite an important project for you. So what did you hope to achieve with, with that EP? It was, you know, the most anxiety I've ever had was picking songs for that because I, I, wrote, I wrote for six years every day, you know, picking songs for that. And uh, you get to the point where it's just like, what? what it, do you pick, you know? And then uh, I think we, we did a really good job as a team picking what um, represented me as what I as what I am, like just as Drew Green and then what does Drew Green want to be for future and what my writing style uh, works towards. And it's just, it was just, it's just wild, man. Uh, yeah. I think and, uh, that, I think that in the future, um, it's, I'm so thankful to have a good team that really knows me as a person and also knows me as a, a writer and what I look forward to doing. Yeah. And it's obviously titled volume one. So is there going to be a volume two on the way soon? Have you got some music oh, in the camp? It's done, man. It's done. Ready. It's, it's ready to go whenever they give me the word, man. Uh, <laughs> 
uh, yeah, we, we, we chose to do that because mainly because I have a song called Dirt Boy and we didn't put Dirt Boy on Dirt Boy Volume 1 and so it's on Volume 2 and we've got uh, five, we cut seven, uh, we're putting out five. Um, we might, I'm not 100% sure we haven't talked uh, longevity what yeah, but hopefully I'll get to put out a little bit more after that too. I mean, some some extra, you know, Dirt Boy Volume Two extras, but um, and there might be a three. I don't know, but as of right now, as of right now, there's just two. Um, I haven't I haven't really got to think about um, Project Three or what my or album or what what comes after that yet. I'm kind of just going with the flow, man, and letting uh, the fans kind of pick. Yeah, what they like yeah. looking forward to that and a few days ago you you released a, a an unreleased song if you will as, a, as an acoustic version hooch uh certainly one for the drinkers out there so um tell us a little bit about that track and it, can we expect that to be on the next volume at all yeah hooch will definitely be on volume two on um, that uh i'm not sure but as a, as, a, as a right now as i'm 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 guessing that 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 would probably be the next song we put out we'll probably put out a song by itself and then probably another song by itself and then release the rest of the project. Um, that's the, that's how we did with volume one. I don't know. I'm not hundred percent sure, but, uh, yeah, Hooch will definitely be on volume two and it's my favorite song. I, well, it's my favorite production song on uh, volume two. It really sets, uh, the bar, um, for me. And I feel like it's one of the best, Mark was my producer and he went uh, off on it. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty good, pretty good production. I can't wait for everybody to hear it. And um, you've mentioned your team at Sony Music Nashville a few times. I wanted to touch on that a little bit because what, how much of a difference does it make for an artist like yourself to suddenly get a record deal and have a huge team of people behind you working on promo and getting you out to radio? Just, just how much of a difference does that make? It's crazy, man. You don't really, you can't, you don't really fathom it until you're you know, you're sitting in the you know the driver's seat and you realize that you know I'm just a little little guy you know like compared to like some of these I mean some of these guys it's crazy and uh, my team you know grows I feel like we're adding someone to the team every week and um, it's it's awesome because everybody is really that's on my team everyone is like Sony uh, Villa Forty my management team, my social media team, everyone is really excited about doing it. And everybody's really excited about Drew Green. And they're really, they all want, we all want to make it, you know, we're all doing the same thing together, you know, and it's, it's hard because, you know, 2020 and COVID and everything and everything. And it's, so it's been very blessed to have a team that's just really, really trying and really working hard and, you know, day in, day out. And I work like a dog. So it's like, and it's, awesome to have a team that's that I feel like is up to par with what I'll consider work ethic I guess and just finally Drew before I let you go um obviously we're based in the UK and uh, country music has grown hugely in the UK the last few years and a lot of the Sony guys have come over here and performed at some of the big festivals yeah. is it something that you'd like to come and do at some point because uh, there's, a, there's a huge market over here now yeah uh I would love to man uh I've never been and I would love for my first time going over there would be to play shows for, for anybody. Uh, yeah. yeah, I would love to go over there. I mean, I would go tomorrow if they'd say, Drew, we need you to go over to the UK tomorrow. <laughs> I would be packing right now. But Dude, we've, got, we've got to make this happen, man. Hopefully soon, hopefully soon. Yeah, fingers crossed, man. Well, Drew, thank you so much for doing this, man. I really appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, I'll hopefully make that UK trip happen as soon as, as, soon as we possibly can. Get you introduced to the yeah, UK fans. That'd be awesome, man. I can't wait. Thanks, Dan, so much. Man. Right, man. I've enjoyed it, man.